Let us pray. Our God who reigns as King Sovereignly above, our God who comes yet as kind Savior below, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Indeed, what babe is it? The babe who existed before all time, through whom all things are created, yet a babe, a babe come as a child, a son that was given out of love, who grew to be the man to bear our sins and go to the cross for our reconciliation. In him we seek to praise and worship you. Help us this day to give you the proper thanks and respect for all you've done for us and help us to rejoice in the gospel of our salvation and then live as obedient servants of your kingdom. Bless us as we study your word and guide us in all things. In Christ we do pray. Amen. Grace to you in peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. On Sunday mornings in our bulletins, the intros to our lessons are written by Pastor Elkin. On Saturday night, I write them. So they're, they're different, generally speaking. And when I write them on Saturday night, Ellen proofreads them. I need lots of proofreading. The one I wrote for the epistle lesson today talks about how in this chapter, in Colossians chapter 3, Paul does a couple things. He describes what we should put off, and then he describes what we should put on. And I use that in my introduction to this epistle lesson. And Ellen circled, put off, and said, where's this? And that sparked my thought and said, that's where I should start today. We should talk about what to put off. Now, the epistle lesson for today is what we should put on. So we're going to do that next week. But we're going to end this year with thinking about what you should put off as you go into the next year. A lot of you are probably talking about putting off some weight next year. See, we do talk about putting off. Putting off a little extra sweets, putting off a little extra something. You know, we talk about what we're going to put on, a little bit more exercise or something like that. But we're going to talk about what we need to put off. We're going to look at uh, Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through uh, 9 today. But I, I'm going to risk a little something. I want to start with a song that I want to introduce you to. Uh, this song is by a gentleman named Noel Paul Stewart. Anybody ever hear of Noel Paul Stuckey? Yeah, I got everybody shaking their head no. How many of you have heard of the group Peter, Paul, and Mary? Uh-huh, yeah, Peter, Paul, and Mary. His name was Noel, and they said, Peter, Noel, and Mary don't work. You're Paul. <laughs> so that's where Paul comes from. Noel, Noel, Noel Stuckey is Noel Paul Stuckey. And he was raised a Christian. He wandered for some time before coming back to the Lord. And he wrote this wonderful song that describes his life and his journey. And I, I want you to hear this as we begin this morning. And hopefully I can relate this correctly to the message. I think. The way to my father's house when I was just a boy Lay through fields of innocence Near bubbling springs of joy And when I lay me down to sleep I pray the Lord my soul to keep The road was never very steep On the way to my father's house the way to my father's house when I turned seventeen Wandered through inviting hills Beside a tumbling stream Sometimes in prayer upon my knees I would feel the distant breeze the Road was winding now through trees on the way to my father's house. The way to my father's house at the age of twenty nine led over a mountain.
mountain that I would seldom climb Except in times of great despair When I'd be looking everywhere And then one morning he was there On the way to my father's house and glory, what a refreshing story I was so blind Before he opened my eyes Restoring me to The way to my father's house At the age of 31 Was a ride on a ring Oh, my new life had begun And every evening I could look Through the pages of his book And recognize the paths I took On the way On the way I go to my father's house in these troubled days. The spirit is moving in mysterious ways. Reminded when old doubts appear, the perfect love casts out all fear in. Thanks, I tend the garden here On the way, on the way On the way to my father's house Years ago I read an article written in Christianity Today and Paul the old Paul Snooky, talked about being with Peter, Paul, and Mary, the fame they had gained, and how he was unhappy, unsatisfied, and unfulfilled. He talks about how they used to all ride in different limousines to concerts. Even though they got along to a degree, they just kind of wanted to be by themselves and been together so much. And he remembered how he'd been raised as a child. And then one day his life was turned around. And this is the story of his journey to faith in Christ. Christ should make a difference in our life. You heard how he kind of progressively grew away from Christ. The mountain path got higher and steeper. But all of a sudden it was great joy to be traveling to, to Christ. Great joy to be in his father's house, not just about church, but in that relationship. And that's what Paul is talking to the Colossians about. The difference that we should have in our lives between what is the old man before Christ and what is the new man after Christ. So I remind us one more time, as always, about the foundational doctrines of Lutheranism. We've gone over this many times, and I love it. But this is so important for us to keep in focus in our minds, as we got a flying insect coming by. <laughs> Law and gospel. These are the foundational doc doc doctrines of Lutheranism. You should know them. I'm sure you do. Law, what we cannot do. We cannot live up to the law. We cannot fulfill it. It shows us what we're incapable of, but it guides us to the gospel. And the gospel shows us what God has done. That's the joy of the story. It's not about us anymore. It's all about Him. He gave His Son. He sent His Son in human form to show us the way to die on the cross for our sins. This is the glorious message of the Gospel. But it doesn't end with just law and Gospel because law guides us to Gospel. But we need to understand that once we're at Gospel, we go back to the law. Not to try to fulfill it, but because God now empowers us to do, to do the law. 
And this is what Paul is coming to the Colossians with. He's telling them what they need to do as they are in Christ. And he starts with the Gospel. The Gospel for Paul, he describes it here in Colossians verses 1-4. through On your insert, on the insert, Therefore, if you have been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, is revealed, then you, will, then you also will be revealed with Him in glory. Start with verse 3. Verse 3 resonates with baptism. You have died. In baptism, we are buried with Christ. Our life is hid with Christ. We're raised to newness of life. This is salvation. This is justification. This is where the gospel message starts. It's Christ who died in our place, brings forgiveness and reconciliation to us as a gift. What joy it is in a season when we think of gifts. Let us not miss the greatest, truest gift of all, Christ for our salvation. So we come to baptism. This is the gospel. Here Paul is telling the Colossians, this is what you've done. You have been baptized. You have died to sin. You have been raised to Christ. So, sanctification. God, chapter, verse 1. Sanctification. We've been raised up. We're no longer just the same person. We're seated with Christ. And I encourage you to think of that. You no longer just walk on earth. You have a position now in heaven already. You've been filled by the Spirit. You're empowered to live as God wants you. We usually end the Gospel with justification, salvation, and sanctification, empowerment of the Holy Spirit. But it really doesn't end there. As during the Advent season, we looked at not only the first advent of Christ in Jerusalem, but we looked at his second advent when he'll come again. Paul points us to something beyond the present. He points us to glorification in verse 4. We will be like him. When he comes, we will be revealed to be in him. Sanctification helps us to resemble Christ now. His return gives us the ability to be glorified like him forevermore. So that's where Paul begins in chapter 3 of this wonderful letter. With the gospel message, reminding the Colossians that they have been saved in Christ, they have been sanctified by the Spirit, and one day they look forward to being glorified forevermore. That's the glorious gospel. That's the gospel. And from that he moves on. Now, Paul then moves, as I've tried to indicate right, from the gospel to the law. It's time to move on. The law is in Colossians chapter 3, verses 5 through 17. We're going to cover 12 through 17 next week. Today we're going to look at put off. What does Paul instruct us to put off? And next week we'll see what we've got to put on. So as you think of your New Year's resolutions, as you think of the things you want to change, I want to encourage you this morning to think of some things that you need to put off. Some things that you might need to change your mind on. Because Paul tells us to set our mind on the things above. Not on the earthly things, but on things above. So we read from Colossians chapter 3, verses 5 through 9. Therefore, consider the members of your earthly body as dead to immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which amounts to idolatry. For it is because of these things that the wrath of God will come upon the sons of disobedience. And in them you also once walked when you were living in them. But now you also put them all aside. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive speech from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, since you have laid aside the old self with its evil practices. There we go. Paul gives us this list of things that we should change. And this list can be divided into two parts. Basically the parts of works in verse 5 and the parts of words in verse 8. In verse 5, we start with this. Immorality. Put off immorality. Adultery. 
fornication. Paul is talking to a group of people who at the time his epistle was written would go to church or go to their temples or go to their services of worship, whatever they were worshiping, offer their sacrifices and prayers, and then go out and live any way they wanted. Immorality was rampant. And Paul is saying, no longer. No longer. Now it's time to be holy individuals. You've been redeemed by the blood of a holy sacrifice in Christ. Now let's put off these things. Put off immorality. No more adultery. No more fornication. No more sex outside of marriage, etc., etc. Put off immorality. Put off impurity, which is uncleanness. Don't do the things that are inappropriate. Don't do the things that are wrong. Put off passion. Passion here is that improper affections. The longing for something you shouldn't have. Put off evil desires. Lust. What is lust? That desire that says, I've got to have it now. If you don't have it, God says, you should wait for it. God's guiding and timing is always right. See? Put off lust. Put off evil desires. And put off greed. He talks about greed as being covetedness, covered by the, <coughs> by the commandments. It's the same, he says, as idolatry. To covet something and to want it so highly, you're worshiping it. You're exchanging it for the presence of God in your life. So all of these things, immorality, impurity, passion, uh, evil desires, and greed, these are the things that you should put off. Put off. These are the things that will hinder you from going to your Father's house. That will disrupt your relationship with God. Those are the works we should put off. How about the words that we should put off? He starts with anger. Feelings of hatred. Violent passion. When you speak impro improperly toward other people in anger, when you're rash, when you're unloving, put away your anger. Put away your hatred. As you enter into the new year, if God brings to mind a person and you think, oh, I don't want to be around that person, I hate that person, that's a person God wants you to forgive. That's a person God wants you to put off. The only person you're hurting is yourself, of course. Anger. Put off anger. Put off wrath. Outbursts of emotion. Uncontrolled temper. I hear stories of people who can't control their temper. Years ago, I could never control my temper. I was out of control. Through the power of the Spirit, I've learned to control it. You can too. Put off being uncontrolled. No longer. No outbursts of emotion. No wrath. Malice, wicked gossip. Wicked gossip. Badness. There's so many people who want to try to see how bad they can be. Let's see how good you can be. Put off the badness. Put off wicked gossip. Don't talk about other people the wrong way. That's not appropriate. Slander. This is when we take God's name in vain. This is when we speak badly of others. It's not appropriate. That's what we should put off. Can you put off speaking badly about others? Can you resolve going into the new year to only talk good about everybody? I love the movie Bambi. Bumper's rule is one's precious. Bumper's mother said to him, if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. That's what we're talking about. Speak nice. Speak nice. Slander. Abusive speech. Lie. Foul talker. Or foul language. I don't know about you. I'm just so tired of people using inappropriate words. Those four-letter words. Like their vocabulary is nothing more. Their mind is so little. I'm maybe getting too personal. You know, there are a lot of words in the English language. Learn some new ones. <laughs> Put off saying those, those things. They're not worth it. It's degrading. These are the things that we need to put off. These words, these actions should be put away from us. 
Why? Because these bring on the wrath of God to the sons of disobedience. So as you go into the new year, think about those things that keep you from going to your father's house. And may you find great joy once again in going to your father's house, as Paul did, over that rainbow of joy, looking through the pages of his book. Because you are a new creation in Christ. So put off the old things. Put off those works that are unclean. Put off those words that are inappropriate. Know that you're empowered by the Holy Spirit. Know that you're empowered by the Holy Spirit, and He will help you, guide you, and enable you to put these things off. So let's resolve to put some of these things aside. And I challenge you and encourage you. What can you put aside? Next week, we'll look at what we should put on. What we should replace the evil with in the righteousness that Christ gives us. I've gone back to the prayer of the week for this morning. There in your bulletin, uh, there on the bottom of your insert. And I invite you to join me as we pray about putting off these things in preparation for the new year and think about the things we should put on. We say together, God of forgiveness and God of the future, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as I consider the new year ahead, may I first pause to offer you my thanks and praise for all that you have done for me in the past. I thank you for salvation and sanctification. I thank you for love and life. I pray as I enter this new year, I will put off those things that offend you. Help me to put away all the things that cause you shame, that bring disgrace to your kingdom, or that result in your name being dishonored. By the power of the Holy Spirit, help me no longer to walk in sinful ways or in a sinful manner. I pray in the name of him who saved his by his grace, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Love God the Father, the Holy Spirit, be with you all. Amen.